Welcome back everybody. Today I want to take a look at a farm that a few people have been commenting on as the best farm in the game. These people have sworn by it, that it puts all other farms to shame, that I'm wasting my time doing those other farms instead of focusing on it. So I'm willing to do some testing and some math to see if they are right. What farm is everyone so excited about? Well, it's the Variance Dungeons, the easy versions of the new dungeon system introduced in Inwalker. You can sell them on any job besides Blue Mage, or you can go in with a group of up to four people. At the end of the Windwalker, we have three variant dungeons available to us. The Sildan Subterrain, Mount Rockon, and the newest Alo Alo Island. Today we'll be looking at all three and all the various items you can farm. I will then break each of them down mathematically and give you an estimated gill per run per hour. I'll give you an average with and without possible rare drops. Since in my research, I have only found people claiming it as a one and a half percent drop rate, although I couldn't find an official post. So take the drop rate as you will, but for the sake of this video, I will accept that percentage. I will be running these dungeons solo on my warrior. My warrior is item level 640, and I still haven't bothered melting any materia on my gear. I know, I know. The first dungeon is the Sildan Subterrain. We will be escorting Nanamo through a secret passage under her palace. We are given three possible directions. Nanamo will stand in front of a random direction. You can choose whichever direction you want, but you are rewarded an additional personal spoil box if you choose her route. These boxes will normally only have a Deceiver's Diamonds, which will make the air sparkly for a few seconds, but has no real value. Though the personal boxes, just like the boss loot, have a chance to drop special items which include the big ticket items. Sewer Skink Minion, the Sponge Silky Minion, which is a mini version of the last boss. You can also get the Sildan Side Table and the Sabotender Parasol. So, unless you are working on getting the completion mount, always choose the same path as Nanamo. You will have to defeat two bosses and they each drop Sildan posters. One from the mid boss and two from the last. These can be used to buy various cosmetics from Trissascent and Old Charlian and will be our main source of gill making for this run. The dungeons take roughly 20 minutes to complete, so we can estimate on clearing 3 runs an hour. The cosmetics for the Sildan dungeon are the Noir outfit and ballroom etiquette ample appreciation. Each of them have a certain required posters and divisibles of 3, so it's easy to look at each and see how many runs each will require to obtain. I'll now look up each prize on Universalis and divide that number by the number of runs to get said item. So we can then have an average price per run. I'm also going to round up to the nearest thousand and give a rough estimate to simplify the amount. The Neuer hat is going for 70,000 and it takes five runs to complete. So that's 14,000 a run. The long coat is going for 400,000 in nine runs, making it 45,000 a run. Gloves are 90 for three or 30K. Slacks 180 for four runs for 45k. Shoes 49k for three runs at 16k and ample appreciation is 90k for three runs coming out to 30k. To get an average gill per run, I add up all the items run price coming to at 180k. Since there are six items, I divide by six, giving me an average of 30,000 a run or 90k an hour. To add in the rare drops, I'm going to take 1.5% of the value of each item and add it to each run average. Sewer Skink is going for 228k and 1.5% of that is 3420. Bunch Silky is 118,000, so 1770. Sildan Side Table is 580,000, so 8700. And the Sabotender's Parasol is going for 102,000, giving us 1530. I add all these numbers to each run, giving us a new average run of just over 45,000 or just under 136,000 an hour. Not unbelievable numbers, but still a pretty good amount of gill. Let's now do the same with Rock On Mount. This time we're escorting Hancock and once again to give us the best odds, we'll again choose the same path that he wants to go. The dungeon also takes about 20 minutes to complete. So time for more math, yay! The second dungeon has a lot more cosmetics available than the first dungeon. Two outfits, a fashion accessory, an emo, a haircut, and an orchestrian roll. The Sishi Obishi is going for 
89,000 and takes three runs, averaging at roughly 30,000 a run. The Hitatari is going for 420,000 and takes six runs, coming out to 70,000 a run. The Kiribakama is 150 for three runs at 50k a run. The Obutazori is going for 200k for three runs at roughly 63,000 each. Kanzashi is 150 for three runs, so 50k a run. The Kochiki is 170 for six, making roughly 28 a run. Hakakama is 200k in three runs, coming out to 63k. The rose colored spectacles are going for 92,000, but here's the kicker it only takes one run. Scrupulous Citation is going for 125 at three runs for 42k each. Ambitious Ends is 109 for two runs, coming out to about 55k each. And Looping of the Deepest Fringes costs 150k in three runs, making it 50k a run. So add them all up for 593,000, divide by 11, coming out to 54,000 a run or 162,000 an hour. Already looking better than Silden's best. We'll now add in the rare drops. Rock on Mount has some of the most lucrative rare drops in the variant dungeons. Remember, we're going off the 1.5% odds of each of these items dropping, so we're adding that amount of their going price to each run. The Sukumagami Parasol is going for 270k at 1.5%, that's 40.50. Okuri Chochen is at roughly 139,000, that's 20.85. Shiramaro, the big ticket item, is going for 3,125,000. So 46,875 will be added on. And Kuromaro, his little brother, is going for 70,000. Wow, he's dropped a lot. That's 1050. Add all these to the average run price, giving us a potential new average run of just over 107,000 gil a run, giving us an estimated hourly of over 321,000 gil. Now that is a farm I would happily invest more time into, though a lot of that increase is coming from Shiromaru, which arguably is the best non-promotional minion in the game, says me. The final dungeon is Alo Alo Island. It's the newest and final variant dungeon for Inwalker. This time we're taking Mr. Zero out of three fish man himself, Matsuya, to a mysterious island. We'll be guarding him so he can go fishing. Once again, three ways, and once again, he'll choose a random route, and once again, we'll pick his route for the highest odds of getting something big. This dungeon will take roughly 20 minutes to complete, and once again, has two bosses. Ooh, see a theme? The final dungeon has a couple less cosmetics available to buy than Rukhan did. One glam set, a fashion accessory, an emote, haircut, and orchestrion roll. For the final time, we'll take their prize on Universalis and divide it by the number of runs it takes to obtain it to get a prize per run amount, then add them all together and divide by the number of items to get an average prize per run. Then we'll add in the bonus loot afterwards for a new number, including their low drop rates. The Free Spirits hat is going for 150,000, but takes five runs to complete, coming out to 30,000 a run. The jacket costs 690 at nine runs, making it 76 a run. The ring bands are 345 and takes three runs, coming up to 115,000 a run. The slops are 128 in four runs, making it 32k a run. The loafers are 120k in three, so 40k a run. The status wings are 59k, and just like the rose specs, it's the only other item that only takes one run. Humble Triumph goes for 157k and takes three runs for roughly 52k a run. The bold and braid goes for 150k and only takes two runs for 75k a run. And Old Speaker Slumber is going for 130 for 30 runs, coming out to roughly 43k a run. Grand total of 522,000 divided by 9, making it 58,000 a run or 174,000 an hour. So Alo Alo Island is the best hourly rate, excluding rare drops. So just like before, let's look at the going price for the rare drops and add one and a half percent of the value to our runs to get a new potential hourly rate. The first item is the Alo Alo Roselle Hedge going for 16,000. That's 240. That's a great start. 
Next is a giant leaf parasol for 500,000. That's 7,500. Also have Repulu minion going for 142,000. It's 2130. And Yulo Sapa, the big mouth, going for 450,000, coming out to 6750. Add them to the average run, giving us a new total of almost 75,000 a run or 225,000 an hour. So if my math is right, it goes Rakan, Alo Alo, and then Sildan in order of gil per hour for everything. But if you want a more consistently hourly gil rate that doesn't rely so heavily on rare drops, then you should focus on Alo Alo over Rakan, though both of those dungeons are a respectful farm. In all honesty, compared to these two, Sildan just looks horrible in comparison. Don't do it. Don't do it. No. After some more research, I can see why people swear by these farms. It does look like a reasonable time investment that you can do solo or with friends. You don't lose much doing this with other people, unless a Shiramaru drops, of course. Eh. I really hope my math was correct. If I was wrong, by all means, let me know what I did wrong so I can put in a note with the corrections. I only ask for one thing. Please don't be a dick. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing for more Gale farming videos in the future. I know this video had a bit more number crunching than I normally provide. Let me know what you think. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye.